Texas. Let's welcome in our co-hosts on this Thursday, the Hall of Famer Matt Miller. Good morning, Matty. Good morning. It's an all Matt's co-host day here, along with Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. I like it when we have these days where we make it easy for the guests when they're being asked a question by the co-host. Yeah. It's the same name. We have an all Bill day. Sometimes we have an all Matt day. Today's the all Matt day. Not to be confused with all Madden, by the way. <laughs> Pretty close to... You're going to go all Madden by the end of this episode. After ducking. <laughs> our, uh, our first guest, by the way, is the uh, Senate President, Lieutenant Governor Craig Blair. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matt. And good morning to your listeners. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I had fun saying that. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is kind of fun to say good morning, Matt. Yeah. Uh, hey, how, how's your weather in Charleston? We're finally warming up here a little bit, getting some snow melt. It's warmed up a little bit, but it's uh, drizzling rain today. It's calling for rain most of the day here today. Yeah, we have that, uh, that too there, so I guess it is as it is. Hey, uh, Craig, I want to get into a couple of things with you here. Uh, first and foremost, we uh, time is obviously short. Uh, w- yes. w- one of those is uh, this uh, mobile registration card and driver license uh, uh, situation uh, in, uh, in the bills that you're considering. What are you doing with that? Uh, to, to, well, to, it, this is something I've been pounding on uh, since Ever Frazier. He's the commissioner. He's been there for two or three years now. And he's doing a great job at the DMV trying to move us into the 21st century on being able to manage that. And uh, for, to, uh, they have already announced uh, for mobile registrations and mobile driver's license. That means that it can be on your phone if you choose to. And that's a good thing. It'll actually actually expedite processes when you're checking out, doing different things, you get the prescription, the list goes on for being able to manage that. And it's moving us into the 21st century, but it's also setting the stage, which is coming soon. And that is, is that you're going to be able to hold your phone up to your license plate, click, click, renewed your tags, and never went to the DMV. Didn't take legislation to be able to do this. It took cooperation. And I, I tip my hat to both the governor, uh, because the, the commissioner uh, is appointed by the governor. It's one of his team that comes in and does this. And he has been audit on it since the day that he was first appointed there. And, and I've known him for years. Of, and uh, to, he's heard me uh, talk about this over and over. But he picked up the ball, ran with it. And it's the most beautiful thing when this takes place. And you don't need to draft legislation. You use the tools that you have in front of you. But we're moving the West Virginia ahead of most other states. And I got to add to this, uh, the, the same man uh, with a little help from the legislature made it so that, you know, everybody knows that Delaware is the place to go to incorporate a business. Well, West Virginia is where you go to title a vehicle now. It is awesome. And, and I'm talking about nationally. So if you're an enterprise or uh, a U-Haul, people that, you know, do have a global fleet that's all over the place, what they want to do is titling. It's going to bring in uh, over $150 million into our road fund by being able to manage the titles throughout this country. Uh, and, and again, this is another effort that uh, was spearheaded uh, by Commissioner Every Frazier. So I'm very proud of that. It just goes to show how West Virginia is on the front side. We're looking for innovative ways to be able to do wonderful things for the people of West Virginia of, and, and put us at the forefront where other states talk about us. And they are. Well, anything that gets you out of the DMV office <laughs> is an improvement to people's lives. Yes, time is money, uh, and it's the the one resource that you really, really can't buy. And, you know, paying taxes is one thing, but having to sit there and wait an hour to be able to do that, that's another. And so we're looking at making West Virginia a digital state across the board uh, so that if you choose to, and that's the key ingredient on that, young people like it like this, uh, to where you can pay your taxes, be able to manage 
everything right from your mobile phone. And it's but it, it's very, very attractive, and we want to keep our youth here uh, for the jobs that we're bringing to this state. And this is one way to do it, and it actually grows our economy, grows our population, and solves a lot of the process, or a lot in that process. Any questions about this for Craig before I ask the next question? Yes, uh, Senator, um, it's Matt Harvey. Um, but people, so I, I just want to get this $150 million uh, benefit to the state. It's because people will start, like these fleets, like U-Haul, you said, will bring their inventory and they'll, they'll actually title it in it. Will that subject them to property taxes? Uh, no. No. Uh, and the reason for it is, it'll still be somewhere else. There will not the inventory, to a greater degree, there'll be some of it in West Virginia, uh, but it'll be throughout the the rest of the country. And what it is is they have this problem with titling. If they buy something, it takes months uh, to be able to get the titles work done to be able to get that vehicle on the road. We've reduced that time down to less than 24 hours. And so this is a tool that they've been looking for uh, to be able to do it. And West Virginia just so happened to be about three years ahead of anybody else. Montana has actually duplicated what we've done. But the problem is they don't have the infrastructure to do it. They're trying to do it all manually. Our goal is is in to, is to make it so that you can actually title a vehicle electronically in the state of West Virginia in five minutes or less, and the paperwork gets back uh, for, to, to where, let's say Utah, California, wherever it may be, that they're wanting to, to deploy this in their fleet. And so it's an expedite process where we actually get resources from it will be for the titling fees. And it, you can charge a higher titling fee, by the way, the quicker that you get it done. Imagine having that done. Uh, right now we're 24-hour turnaround. But it, 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 we're, we're doing everything that we can to improve the process, to make it so that if it's five minutes, there's nobody going to compete with us, and we'll own the market forever, just like Delaware owns the market for incorporating businesses. Craig, this is Matt Miller. I just want to make sure, is this an app that someone would download into a phone, as you talked about doing a registration, pointing it at your license plate, or can you do it through online services, but even through your phone? You can currently do on online to renew your tags, but it's cumbersome. <clears throat> and what this will do is make it so that literally you take your phone, it'll be an app, of, and then you just hold it up to your license plate, click, click, renew your tags. And the sticker will come in the mail, and, and, and you're done. But you never t took time out of your day. And imagine having... The, the, the average people have probably two automobiles, uh, maybe three. And so that means three trips to the DMV or three trips to sitting down online to do it, whereas you just walk out and hold your phone up and click, click, and it's basically done. Uh, and th th that is the future. You know, th it's, it's so different from buying something on Amazon uh, or, or you know where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. uh, people, I do most of my banking nowadays uh, on my phone. I can't mm -hmm. tell you the last time I walked into a bank, uh, for, for that matter. You get to, isn't it wonderful that when you make a purchase, of uh, it comes up on your phone and you, you see that alert of, say you're at the Olive Garden and you're having dinner and you pay for it and then you see the transaction go through and the, 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 the next minute or so, or if not, right then and there. This is what we're looking at, moving West Virginia into that same type of environment uh, so, so that people can move along and then expand it out. Uh, again, to, we're trying to make people's lives easier so that you're not bowing down to government to have to pay the taxes. It's going to be a big deal. Greg, go ahead, Matt. Before I ask my next question, I was going to turn it over to Rob, so you, you couldn't see his reaction in studio, but I'm sure he'll tell you. Greg, I need you to go to nice family-run Italian restaurants and not the Olive Garden. <laughs> You're not getting the authentic Italian experience at the Olive Garden. 
Hey, to, to, look, I, to, I have authentic Italian experiences, but every now and then I want to go in for that soup and salad <laughs> special. <laughs> okay, um, I'll have to tell you, with breadsticks and uh, a little Alfredo dressing to put it in, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sophisticated enough to say that I do not like the chains. <laughs> I'm going to bring you along. You just work, let me, I have time. I can work with you. We're going to next conversation we have is be different. Hey, my final question was just: Is that app already available, or when will it be released? That that it's coming in the months into the future. They're building it out uh, to be able to do that. Uh, the, I believe the app of that what I was talking about for registrations and your driver's license is going to be available in a matter of days. The announcement was made of uh, yesterday uh, for being able to do that. And. Um, and again, you're not being forced to do it in any way. Uh, two other states already have driver's licenses that are being done that way. Uh, but we're just wanting to stay ahead of the curve so that our youth, uh, remember, they're our number one export in the state. Uh, we need to be able to adapt our strategies, our policies that we have to make it so that they want to stay here. And and there's another one that, that I'm wanting, and that is if there's issues issues on the road, whether it's a pothole or whatever it may be, where you can click off where that pothole's at. And rather than having somebody driving around from the Department of Highways looking for them and then sending out a crew to fix them, wouldn't it be great that you, you just, when you see that pothole, you click, then it goes up into the system and you know where the road work needs to be addressed. And then it gets done in a timely manner. Uh, and and some of that's taking place right now, but it needs to be a streamlined process so that West Virginians can work together on, on it, through the electronic efficiencies that's out there. And you know we we all know what Waze is, and, and uh, we we use that going down the road and let you know if there's traffic problems up in front of automobiles alongside the road of road hazards where deer's in the road. I use Waze all the time because of that. We need to do the same thing for potholes so that we can, in, in road work that needs to be done. And But we, th this is the most beautiful part and, and that is is that the Department of Transportation, which the Department of the DMV and the Department of Highways is underneath of, is all about of moving forward and getting us into the 21st century to be able to manage that. Some of those potholes are as damaging us, as deer. And it saves us taxpayer dollars so that we can do more. Craig, I have a question for you from a listener who texted me, Bob Phelps, who I used to play softball with way back in the day in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, Bob was the pitcher. Uh, he asked uh, to, for clarification in regards to this bill. All right. Uh, you a bill. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, will, so... You can title the vehicle in West Virginia, but again, you'll pay the fees, but not the personal property taxes. If, if the vehicle is located because outside the, the state, the vehicle will be outside the state. Yes, uh, it, 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 and so that again, this is generating one hundred and fifty million dollars for the road fund. And why would you want? They wouldn't come here. The bottom line is they wouldn't come here if you're going to say, no, the vehicle has to be stationed so that you pay personal property taxes in there. And, you know, we'll get right down to it. It's a non-issue anyhow uh, because, remember, uh, that we've made it so that it's a refundable tax credit Correct. for the personal property tax on automobiles to start with. Uh, but this is a way to be for, to make it so that general or West Virginia is at the forefront, and we're gener we're going to generate an additional 150 million dollars that the taxpayers won't have to foot the bill for that goes directly directly into our road fund. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to move to the next issue before we run out of time. If uh, if you're done with that one. And that has to do with the Council of State Governments and their resolution urging the feds to implement policies expediting permitting and regulatory requirements. What's the uh, story behind this? 
Okay, let me tell you a little bit of a backstory on that. Of last year, of uh, I was elected to being of uh, the chair for the council of state governments. And for your listeners who don't know to, of what that is, it's uh, it's an organization that binds states together, and we work on policies together, and, t- and talk to each other and how to prove it improve our states. Uh, West Virginia is a member state of it, and so is Virginia, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. And so I chair that organization of now for for this coming year, and whenever they we had our chairs uh, that's leadership meeting for that organization, uh, I said you know we do a great job of helping each other out, uh, but you know where we're, we're falling short at, and that is dealing with the federal government. Uh, the federal government exists solely for uh, to, to to keep the states organized. We, we the federal government does not dictate to the states or should not. Now, that's gotten a little bit out of whack, and I think that your listeners, everybody would agree uh, that's the case on that. And so we t- t- I told them, I said, let's get ready and do resolutions in our states uh, that are all on the same topic and push them to the federal government. Our strength is in numbers, uh, being able to work together. So we had to determine uh, what one of the things that we wanted to do that we could all agree on. And uh, I did the, I'll have to tell you, the first one I threw out there, I failed. And because... You know, Congress down there got all jammed up on the time zone, and I think everybody's in agreement, including your listeners. Pick one. Uh, But the problem is, is 50 percent of the people uh, want standard time, and the other one wants the daylight savings time, and that one failed. Uh, That was a bad idea. But then we got to looking at the permitting process. This is something that is a tremendous problem of and so all our states are going to bind together do resolutions and then it's picking up more steam than i ever dreamed that this could there we're going to end up uh down on capitol hill and um, imagine 15 states stand together and i predict that there's going to be many other states that's going to join on board for this and it's the permitting process that's got to deal with energy uh, new energy specifically, and whether it be pipelines, whether it be solar, whether it be gas, it doesn't make any difference. Nuclear, of the energy needs are going to double of over the next 20 years, and right now we do not have the infrastructure in place to be able to provide for those energy needs. And that's one of the things that gives us both national security, food security, of everything about it, of is the energy makes it happen. Of and we are holding ourselves to I, to, to, I guess maybe a higher standard's not a way to put it. We were caught up into a bureaucratic process to where the federal government, and I'm talking about our elected of, officials, have abdicated of to of the bureaucrats of all these different agencies, and what they've done is made it onerous to do even some of the smallest things. And so what I'm getting at, when have you ever seen the fossil fuel industry wanting to partner with uh, the new energy that's wanting to par- uh, partner with of, of nuclear? You see where I'm going with this. Uh, it's like we've got to get a better grasp on this, and we can still accomplish our goals of having of you know a clean environment of uh, good water and all those things. But the permitting process is so onerous that it is deterring that type of investment of in our country, and that can't happen. And that's and that's one of the advantages a country like China has. They're a dictatorship over there, and to a greater uh, degree, uh, one person makes a decision, good, gone, done, and they're they're on their way to doing whatever they want to do. We don't do that in this country, and I'm not saying that we should be anything like that. But we also have to understand that it shouldn't take two years to figure out 
whether there are muscles in the river someplace uh, that, that is going to be able to create a problem. They, they, these things need to be inventoried in such a way that it is not onerous on the investment uh, that you need to have to be able to provide of uh, electrical service or any type of energy for that matter of uh, to, to provide for jobs, to, uh, to make it so that we live the lifestyle that we've become accustomed to, and, and, and again, same way for solar and wind. It all falls into those categories, <clears throat> and we know that what is, it's not working right now, and so this is an attempt to try to do something. Of, and like I said, it's picking up steam, greater steam than I ever dreamed it would, and I'll add one last thing to this, and then I'll let you ask me questions. In the state of West Virginia, we're recognized of having one of be- one of the best of uh, rules committee, rule making reviews, what it's called. And so our agencies can uh, promulgate rules and all that, but it comes back to the legislature. And it goes through the rulemaking review process to make sure that whatever is implemented is done by elected officials, not some paid bureaucrat that outweighs elected officials and, and, and so that slows the process down. The federal government has abd- abdicated that. And, and so this is an attempt for the states to take back uh, a little bit of a control on this, and I'm proud of how West Virginia is at the forefront leading that. Mr. Miller. Uh, Craig, do you have time? I know it's about 825. Do, do you have... Oh, that, that, I'll, I'll give you one minute, and then i got to go. And here's what's happening. <laughs> oh, you needed to get out of 825. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I, I didn't realize what time it was. I wasn't looking. Uh, but our caucus starts uh, with a prayer at 830 in the morning, every morning, for us to be able to discuss our issues. And I t- do not miss those caucuses. This is how we get the work done. Quick, so you want the quick question or no? I, we'll we'll let you go. Yes, because I can get down the hall in less than a minute. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I can see you running quickly right now. Uh, just uh, when you talk about this uh, this council of state governments and and coming together on this particular issue, um, was it easy to get them around the energy issue? Yes. <laughs> that was an easy answer on that. Of uh, we all have concerns, and it doesn't make any difference whether you're a Democrat or Republican. The issues that you're wanting to do individually for your state to be able to grow your economy to to, to provide a secure energy infrastructure is a component. No matter what your choice is, it is the, the federal government slows it all down, and this is where we're asking to get it together. And so, yes, it was very easy. At every speaker or, or, or Senate president that I talked to said, oh, my God, this is a good idea. How, how do we get this started? And I've got a team that works for us out of Georgia uh, that when I put them in place, uh, they, they were questioning whether this was a good idea or not. And now they're falling all over top of themselves. They, they feel like they're, they're in a, a position to make a difference for the the member states that we've got here, and it actually makes CSG South uh, the best one of these. Uh, there's like four different regions that we work from, and CSG South is moving to the forefront. We are the last year at our convention. It was the strongest one of any of them. Uh, we get together and work together and talk to each other and learn from each other and go back and do great things for our state. Got to go. All right. Have a great day. <laughs> Appreciate your time this morning. Senate You're Pre- welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir. Stay out of the Olive Garden. Senate President Craig Blair. <laughs>